Welcome to everybody. Welcome to another Gospel of the Word broadcast. My name is Brother Robert Ryan. My reader today is Brother Walter. How are you doing today? Good, good. How about yourself? I'm doing good, man. Hopefully, keep it in prayer. We have no technical, no technical difficulties, you know, on my <laughs> end or your end or on a show at all. But we want to say, I want to say happy Sabbath day to everybody. I hope you enjoy your Sabbath day because the Lord said the Sabbath day is supposed to be a delight. And if you got done watching any other church service and you're joining in, we're glad that you took the extra time to join in and check this out too. And like always, I'm all going to share with you. Subscribe to the Gospel of the Word broadcast to your friends, associates, and whoever on your Facebook. Just send it out to everybody and ask them to share it because time is wrapping up. Whether you believe it or not, it's moving fast. So without delay, we're going to get into our journey today. And we're going to have some fun with it because that's what I like to do. Have fun with the Word of God because I don't know how your week might have been. It might have been a rough one. But it's Sabbath day and I want to help you have a delight today. So Walt, without further de de uh, delay, you got that open scripture? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We ready. All right. All right. Go ahead. Let's do the open scripture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to be opening today from uh, Matthew 6, verses 30 through 34. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take not, no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith? shall we be clothed for after all these things do the gentiles seek for your heavenly father knoweth that ye have need of all things but seek ye first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you take therefore no thought for the, the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. That's it. Good scriptures to open us up for our journey because the Lord put some things in my mind and, and I've been praying and thinking on some things and people are in a situation now. So the title of this lesson is The Losses and the Gains. <clears throat> Many people when they run into the, the true word of God and the true God, don't realize there's a lot of losses and there's a lot of gain. You know, the Lord allowed me to be in his word over 20 some years. And believe me, for many of you who are watching this show or end up watching it later, that have been in the word for a long time, you will be able to testify to this, to this lesson of the things you have lost and the things you have gained. But what we're going to do is we're going to lay it out like an interview, a job interview. You know, Jesus is the one who is doing the interview. And you are requesting, inquiring about the job. So we're going to lay it on. And I pray to the Most High God, in the name of Jesus, that it makes sense to you. But... Let's go and see what Jesus is going to say to us if we want to have this job. And we're going to find out the different positions and rewards, promises that we can have if we want this job. So let's go into St. John chapter 7. And we're going to pick this up at verse 7 because, remember, I'm going to lay it out like a job interview. You know, you see Jesus. And just imagine if you was around at time, you see Jesus like, you know, man, I know he's the one. I would like to hang with him. Not hang out with him, hang with him. There's a difference. So let's read chapter 7 and see what Jesus is going to say to us when we walk up to him and say, you know, we want to hang with you. Why everybody mad at you, Jesus? Why nobody want to be around you? John chapter 7, verse 7. Go ahead. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. So Jesus telling us right now, hey, you know, the world, man, 
Well, the world can't hate you. Right now, right now. But it hates me. So I hear I'm in front of you. Why do the world hate you, Jesus? Everybody should love Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus said, because I testify of it. That's right. That the work that are evil, the Lord said, hey, this world is evil. So if I'm testifying against it, they're going to hate me. Because either I'm going to do the right thing or the wrong thing. That's for all of us as we walk this journey now. And Jesus is telling you, it hates me. It don't hate you right now because you ain't made decision if you want to be employed in this company. But the Lord tells in Job chapter 9, verse 14, he said, the world is given to the, to the wicked. So what does Jesus testify against the world? We're going to find it out because we want to find out more of the job description and what comes up, comes with it. So right now, that now Jesus is talking to me like it's a negative. I'm kind of concerned. So let's go to Luke chapter, chapter 9. <laughs> See it, what? We're going to have some fun with Luke chapter 9. Come on, everybody have fun with it, but it's serious too at the same time. <laughs> now you ask Jesus, like, okay, Jesus, the world hates you because you testified against it. You're not, you're not following the in crowd. You're doing your thing. But I want to hang with you. I want to work in your system. Now, something else he's going to tell us. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. Go ahead. And he said to them, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. Oh, wait a minute, Jesus. Wait a minute. <laughs> I got to deny myself? Woo. For some of us, that's a bad deal because they have a lot of bad habits. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Lord said, so you got to deny yourself. Mm. And you said, what you said? You said, the world hates you? And for me to roll with you, I got to deny my. That means I can't do the things that, that I want to do anymore because I hang with you. You have a certain way of living, a certain way of, of carrying yourself. So I, that means right now, I can't come as I want to come, like the modern day church is teaching. The stipulation right now. So I got to deny myself. And what else I got to do? Read that last part, Walt. And take up his cross daily. What's it? Take and, up? And take up his cross daily and follow me. So now he's telling me that I got to take up my cross. I got to do this daily. Not just when the Sabbath day come, I'm going to act like I'm a Christian. This position that I'm trying to get with Jesus, I have to do this daily. So I got to deny myself every day. Am I going to be perfect? No, you're going to make mistakes. The Lord said, righteous man falls seven times. If he's so righteous, why he fall the second time? Better yet, why the first? But he did it seven. But the more of that understanding is that he got back up and kept working harder at it. So now we see if we're going to hang with Jesus, I got to deny myself daily. Maybe I got a, a bad attitude all the time. Can't have that. Maybe I want things my way. Can't have that. Maybe I want to cuss people out. Can't do that. We all know our bad habits. So whatever our bad habits is, that's a loss. That's a loss right there because you got to let it go. You can't try to win. You got to lose to win in this situation. So let's go a little farther. So, okay, Jesus, if I deny myself and I take up my cross, that weight daily, so what I'm getting out the deal? Let's go to First John. Right now, Jesus, what you got on tape don't feel comfortable. And I ain't even... <laughs> Sign the agreement. <laughs> I mean, for real. You got to deny myself. I got to do a day. I'm already looking at you. People hate you. So I'm kind of making me feel kind of a little worried. Make them, make them <laughs> First John they, chapter they, 2. Uh... Let's look at verse 25. 2. Huh? They make them know, make them uh, think if they want. A little delay. What's that? 
I'll make them think if they want this job yeah, or not. Make them think. <laughs> Why? Do you really want this job? <laughs> We're gonna say, do you really want the job? You, we are in the interview right now, and right now the interview ain't really pleasant. <laughs> so, first John chapter two. Let's read twenty-five, verse twenty-five. Go ahead. And this is the promise that He hath promised us, even eternal life. Oh, so he talking about okay. Look, I know that kind of sound bad. You know, you got to deny yourself. You got to take the cross daily. But if you do the get eternal life, what does attach to that eternal life? They're kind of like kind of plain right there. Because, you know, we all know everybody will live forever. But what do you mean by eternal life? So let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Let's get that 401k. Let's get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get that one there. Revelation 20. Let's pick it up in verse 6, 20 and 6 because life, a promise. Let's see the, the promise. Let's see the fullness of this promise for, for walking with him and working. 20 and 6. Go ahead, Walt. Blessed and holy is he that hath part of the first resurrection. On such the second death uh -huh. has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Oh, man, that's a, that's a good deal. That's a good 401, right? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to be holy. <laughs> I get the first resurrection. I mean, I ain't got to stand in court, which is judgment day. <laughs> <laughs> and not only, I'm going to be a priest and reign with him for a thousand years. I mean, I ain't dying no more. That's right. That's a good 401 plan, right? There. Now that makes the job even more interesting, more desirable. But still being a human being, I had to look at Jesus and say, Well, that deny yourself every day and people hate you. That's kind of that's kind of kind of thick for some people. But let's go a little further. Let's go to Luke. Because now I'm sitting back and I'm thinking on some things. Let's go to Luke chapter 14. So that's a that's a good thing, a good retirement plan. Luke 14. And we're gonna pick this up at verse 28. <coughs> Luke 14 and verse 28. I said to everybody that's online, happy Sabbath day to you. Luke 14 and verse 28. Go ahead. For which of you intended to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Well, well that's, the whole, that's the thing right there. Hold up, Walt. That's the thing. I know you're on delay. I know we got a delay going on right now. But it clear stuff. So the first thing he said, for which of you intended to build a tower, sitteth not down first? I mean, sit down first and count the cost. You really have to think about this because Jesus already told us that the world hate him. So if, if I'm going to hate him, I got to count the call. Like, what type of hate we talking about, Jesus? You know, I like the package deal of the eternal life and the thousand years and being a priest and being blessed and holy. That's a good package deal. But I got to count the cost on this. Continue reading that from count the cost part. Go ahead, Walt. Whether he have sufficient to finish it, at least happily after uh -huh. he have laid the foundation and is not able to finish it. All that, behold, it began to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Again, the Lord said, the Lord going to show us that you better count the cost because people will mock you if you learn about, and I'm going to hedge the bet, head to head the conversation real quick. If you start finding out the things that you're supposed to do that Jesus do. And if you go and tell people these things, say, look, hey, I'm about to take this new job, the job offered this, yada, yada, that, this and that. But then you, let's say you take the job. 
and you turn around and quit. People will talk bad about you. But with the word of God, you go out and tell people about the word of God. And like I said, deny yourself. That means you are going to change who you was yesterday for today and for tomorrow and forever. And if you're going to do that, then there's some other things that are going to take place as you go through this purge, this transition to obtain this position with the Lord. He said, they will mock him. Verse 30. Saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. So it's saying, this man began to build <coughs> and he was not able to finish. And I apologize to all the viewers for the, the, delay, the, the delay that we have. But to Matthew chapter 2, we got to figure out when you sit there and say, count the cost. The word is, let's count the cost because the first cost is the Lord already said, I'm going to repeat myself, the world hated him because he testified against it. That means he, he told them what they're doing wrong. And the Lord wants to do the same thing, but people there do it in wise to do. Matthew 10. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 10. And we're going to pick this up at verse 34 because now the Lord said, count the cost. What's the cost, Jesus? Now you're going to tell him what the cost. He's going to get a little more in depth. Remember, it's a loss. If you can't finish it, this is a loss. We got, we got one game that's become priest, blessed, holy, thousand here, them games. But look at the caught the losses are kind of stacking up right now. Let's see another. He gonna see what he's gonna say about another by count the cost. Verse 34. Walt, go ahead. Think not that I am come to send Walt? peace on earth. I came to send peace. You went out. You froze up on me. <laughs> you might want to reboot because say I came to send peace. I'll, I'll re Think not that I come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. So the Lord showing you right now, hey, I ain't come to send no peace on earth. Not Jesus. Not the, the Jesus of the world because they say Jesus loves everybody. So why would Jesus want to bring drama inside your household? Remember the Lord said we just ran and loot. Hey, you better count the cost. This is part of that cost. These, this is the losses right here. Because I came not to send no peace. So when Jesus, I see why people don't want to deal with you. They hate you. Verse 35, what is he going to say, Walt? For I am come to set a man at variance against his father and a daughter against her mother, and and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own well, household. Hold on, let me, let me, let me elaborate something, because you, you're going in and out. I ain't mad at you, but you're going in and out on your, on your line. It said for, well, come said a man at variance against his father. You mean, if you put on this position, that you have drama with your father? Yes. Then he said the daughter against her mother. But yes. The daughter against the daughter-in-law against the mother-in-law. That's in-house drama. Your inner circle, your the Lord is letting you know, hey, these are losses. You gotta be willing to let this go. And this is daily. This is not once a week, this is daily. And hopefully it don't become physical, but it can and will become verbal abuse or maybe emotional abuse. This is what he said in verse 36. He trying to say, and a man's foes, me enemies, shall be they of his own household. Well, that's a lot right there, Jesus. That, is that not a lot? Now that 401 ain't looking at it because I'm looking, I'm in my, my flesh right now. The best deal a person can ask for or seek after. But you're talking about I gotta lose my family. 
And some of many people that's watching the show are greatly intertwined with their family where they can't let it go. Mama's more important than children or marriage and vice versa. You know, favorite aunties, favorite cousins. These things cannot be more valuable than who you're trying to, to roll with or be employed with. And that's so let's go a little further. So now he tells you, hey, I'm going to bring you inside your household. So let's go to Luke chapter 14. Luke chapter 14. And while we're going we gonna to work through it, you just got a little delay on your end. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me now? Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, we had uh, Luke 14. Let's pick it up at verse 33. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. So likewise, whosoever he be of you. you. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that for sake of not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. So here is the Lord saying that he already told you to bring drama in your household. That's why we read, he said, consider the call. Can you do this? Many people can't do it. Many people might get the job. Like I said, many are called, few are chosen. And they quit. How many people you know you work a job, a job, everything going good, but then some along of the way of the job calls them, they quit. Don't want to do it no more. They go somewhere else. He says, likewise, whosoever he that whosoever he be of you that forsake not all that he had, I mean you have to forsake everything. It don't mean walk out your house and say, I don't need no home no more, no car, no like that. It's clearly stating that whatever you have. It cannot be more valuable than serving your God and doing, following the instruction of the Bible. We have to cast down that fear. And many people let the fear come on, override them because they're worried about what? Losing everything. Remember, we're talking about losses right now. Then he said, he cannot be my disciple. Lord, it's clear. You can't roll with me if you ain't willing to let everything go. Because remember, he, started, he said, you have to... Deny yourself daily. Why he say daily? Because he know we're work in progress and to purge something, it have to go through a process to become 100% clean or brand new. So let's go for Let's go to 1 John chapter 3. First John chapter three. So now, as we ponder, we make it about mind that hey, I do want to walk with Jesus. I do want that four one. I want that that big package deal. Now, when we start putting it in our mind, this something else gonna come at us in our mind. First John three and thirty. I wait on you walk. You still on delay? Marvel not. Check one, my two. Brother, Can you hear me walk? If the world hate you. It said, Marvel not, my brother. If the world hates you. Lord say, remember when we in a, when we're talking to Jesus, he already said, Hey, they don't hate you right now. They hate me because I testify against it of the wickedness. So now he's telling us, okay. You feel that you thought about it? You got baptized? Can we get baptized? That's that seal the deal of commitment. He said, Mom or not, if the world hates you, I'm telling you, it's going to hate you because the first hate you're going to get is inside your family household because there's some things you're about to start doing that you wasn't doing past tense. Now you're doing in the present. So let's go a little further. 
Let's go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. Romans. <clears throat> and we're going to pick this up because now you tell, hey, don't marvel. The world going to hate you. But something else we got to do to really solid our position, make our position solid, may say. Romans 4, let's pick it up, verse 21. 4 and 21, go ahead. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was right. able also to perform. So we got to be fully persuaded. What, what do we have to be fully persuaded of? Go ahead, Walt. And therefore, it was imputed of him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also. To whom it shall be imputed. Okay, then if we let me weigh in on that. Because I know we have a lot of difficulty. You're not you're not being able to hear me. <laughs> I'm gonna go back and read because you was in and out. Okay. <laughs> I can't hear you. You're in and out on me. And verse 22, and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now was not, it was not written for his sake alone, not just for Jesus alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed me, imputed me credit, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. We got to believe on the Father as well as the Son. Verse 25. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again. You might want to tell Walter to reboot his So we have to believe that who was delivered for our office because remember, <clears throat> the office came from when? And from who? From Adam. Before our time. And then all the way down to our forefather when he said, let, let his blood be on us and our children, children. We have definitely fallen that Deuteronomy 28. So now it is, we got to believe. Now we come to our faith. Fully convinced in our mind about this. So now that we are fully co being convinced, how so? Because remember, we counted the cost and we're willing to say, I have to go against my family. Let's go to 2 Timothy because how do you go against your family? How do you help your family out when it's time to take place? 2 Timothy. Second Timothy chapter two. And we're gonna pick this up at verse 15. Two and 15, because now we made a commitment. So now here's a game. Now we're gonna get some game because we, we showed a lot of losses. But let's look at the, a game. Timothy chapter two, verse 15. Go ahead. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not. Wait a minute. Hand. You got to study. To show yourself approved to God. You say you have to study to show yourself approved unto God. That's a game. A workman. Remember, this is what you're applying for to be this workman to work in the Lord's vineyard. Work a workman that needed not to be ashamed. He rightly or she rightly divided the scriptures, dividing the word of God, the word of truth, the scriptures to strengthen themselves. So now they're reading the Bible, they're going to learn some things. So let's see some things that we're going to learn that's going to cause this drama in your household first. And that first, no, a second, because the first drama is going to be, you got to deny yourself. So let's go to Matthew's chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. Matthew 15. And we're going to read one to three because here's some things we're going to find out. 
Matthew 15. One, two, three. Go ahead, Walt. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were, which were of Jerusalem, saying, why do thy disciples transgress so the we tradition? Have, we, we have scribes and Pharisees. These are the religious leaders. Modern day pastors, preachers, deacons, call themselves reverends or they call themselves priests or even the Catholic Church call themselves, but they don't supposed to do that. So we have these type of people that is approaching Jesus with a question. Read what the question is. Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? It's a, why do the disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them. Ain't that something we do right now today? Is that not something that we do right now today where you go to somebody, wash your hand, go in the refrigerator, wash your hand it before you eat food or something like that, whatsoever it may be. Don't they ask you that? So the tradition of the elders. Let's see. Is that is that everything right on? Can you hear me, Walt? Um, you're going in and out as well. Can we hear each other? I can hear you, but is you going in and out? Well, like to the view, I apologize. I don't know what's going on, but we're going in and out. So hopefully, a lot of the what we teach is not being lost. Hopefully, shouldn't be. Uh, it, it might be, be to the to the weather in our area down here. Okay, then because yeah, and there's nothing I can I can do about it. I don't reset it and everything. Okay then. <laughs> okay then. Well, let's keep going. We know the Lord knows. You know, we, we it's all about putting the air in, gonna get discouraged, and I like that word of God. Ah, so we'll get to that Matthew thing. And it sit there and say they didn't wash their hands. But even like today, we talk about people talk about washing your hands. Do we wash your hands when we go to the gas station? When you pump your gas? When you go get your grocery? Many people touch the bread you bought, buying or the milk or the orange juice or the beef packets. Thousands of people touching everything. But they trying to make a big hoopla because they take some bread and bring it amongst each other and eat. If you're going to get sick. But they want to be real tedious and just work his nerves about something that small because that's their tradition. Like this earth, they got their own tradition. Remember the Lord we started off, he said he testified against it. So this is something he's against. But what is Jesus going to say in verse 4? Go ahead. I mean, verse 3. 3. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandments of God by your tradition? What mean tradition? <clears throat> Remember the Lord said we got to deny ourselves. What is tradition? The whole American calendar is built upon tradition. All the way from the New Year's. And people ain't going to like what I'm going to say, especially the people who keep the Sabbath day. New Year's, Easter, Father's Day, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, Christmas, Thanksgiving, all of it. Like reading history. What is it? All of it have a starting point. But like I said, I'm not on the show to beat anyone up. It's just exposed and just stir the mind of thinking that the Lord testified against this world. He testified against this world. Read that fourth verse. I know it's not there, but just read that fourth verse anyway. We're going to throw God, that in there. 
for God commanded, saying, Honor thy mother, honor thy father and mother, and he that curses father or mother, let him die to death. Now, over the Ten Commandments, it tells you to honor your mother and father. It didn't say pick a day out. <laughs> honor your mother and father. Because remember, you got to do this daily. The Lord said, pick up your cross, deny yourself daily. So every day you should be honoring your parents. Not waiting for Satan's system or the European system to say, this is a day you're supposed to honor your mother and your father. But I do get it, and I do understand because a lot of people don't honor their mother and father, and they wait until that day to give them something, which is really sad. It's sad that the parents would even accept something like that. We have Valentine's Day to come up on the scene. That's man tradition. If a man is walking according to the word of God and a woman is being walking according to the word of God, that man will shower her down throughout the years. That whole year, he's not going to wait for that one day to say, let me give you some typical red roses and some candy hearts and some flowers and, what, catch a movie or something? And if she's not in, she's going to be silly with it and thinking that's something great. But the next 24 hours, he's belittling her, cussing her. Physically, emotionally abusing her, or vice versa, because women get down like that too. <laughs> that's a traditional man that's on this American calendar. Mm -hmm. Because if we're concerned about serving Jesus, serve too. And the first service of practice is in your household, how you treat your spouse, or better yet, yourself. Because if you treat yourself right, remember, you got to deny yourself. If you deny your foul attitude and ways, that if you had that, we all got ways now, then we would treat one another greatly. Because remember, the 401 plan is to get the first resurrection, blessed and holy, be the priest of God for the thousand years. We don't have to worry about going to court, which is judgment day. All right. This is what this is all about, losses and gain. This is a loss because... We don't supposed to do man tradition. Not at all. We're going to get a little more in depth with it. Let's go a little farther. Let's go to Luke. Because remember, we studied the shots of approved. Now he, he got into a conflict with the scribes and Pharisees about tradition and God commandment. So if we're going to roll with Jesus, we got to keep his commandment. We should be concerned about traditions of men's. But let's go to this Luke chapter 4. And let's pick it up in verse 16. Well, Luke chapter 4 and 16. And he, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. He went to the synagogue when? On the Sabbath day. On and the Sabbath the day. Yes, sir. So keep in mind, keep in mind, remember we talk about denying ourselves. If we're going to deny ourselves, I used to go to church on Sunday. Now, I couldn't do that. If I plan on dealing with the word of God, I can't go to church on Sunday because my loved ones, they still go to church on Sunday. Now, bring that sword in the household. It within the family because why they can't read their Bible while going to church on Sunday. They say every day is a Sabbath day, or it doesn't matter what day you go to church. But if you ask to read all that, it can't. So here the drama go come in the household. What if you were a wife that, or you about to make a wife that don't keep the Sabbath day? And you do. Or what if he don't keep the Sabbath day? And you do. What if you got children involved? See, there's a lot of dynamics going to take place. The Lord said, hey, I came to be drama because one, remember, this is the thing to gain. Because I got to start with myself and deny myself from all my bad habits. I can't go to church on Sunday. What about the diary? I got to learn how to eat different. 
I got to learn the Lord. Holy days versus man to this day. These are things that's going to cause drama in the household. And like I shared, everybody since I've been in this ministry, serving God, it's not about convenience, it's about being inconvenient. Because what you're doing, you are displaying to your loved ones for that you're something new. You're different. And they're going to attack you because they're only going to go off your past. They don't want to accept the new version of you. What they should be loving you even more because maybe you was a rotten person, but now you're a better person. It seems like they should be loving you. But that's not the case. So now Jesus kept the Sabbath day. So why do people keep the Sabbath day? That's the seven days a week. But let's go a little farther. Let's go to Mark. Let's go to Mark chapter 8. You don't want to read that Mark verse chapter 17. Eight. If, uh, you didn't read it, go and read it verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. So what book he read? The book of Isaiah. Not the book of Enoch. Not the book of Jasper. Because Lord said, that's the making of many books out here. But this Bible, this is the truth right here. Because you can go to any bookstore, you see thousands of books of authors. But this is the author of all authors. Because his book creates drama, separation. His book show you clean and show you it's dirty. His book can get you into the kingdom and it can show you how to get into like a fire. Think about it. So let's go to that Mark chapter 8. Thank you, Walt. Mm -hmm. When you get there, go and read Mark chapter 8, verse 13. 34. Verse 34. <coughs> 34, yeah, sorry. And when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want you to wait a minute. And he when he called the people, he called the people unto him. And with with his disciple also, and he said unto them, What are you gonna say to him? This is an open invitation. What are you gonna say? Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself. And so take let up him his deny cross and himself. Me. Once again, deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. We already see some things you're about to let go. Your family. If you went to church on Sunday, can't do that. If you want to like to celebrate the holidays that's man traditional calendar, you're supposed to not do it. Not just I. Verse 35. Go ahead. Read 35. We're going to read a little bit more into 38. We're going to go down to 38. So read that 35. I know it's not on there, but I was thinking that last night going over it. I want to go that all the way down to 38. Verse 35. Okay. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, they shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole okay. world? We were in and out and said, for whosoever save his life, lose it. So if you're trying to save your life saying, well, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to get involved with Jesus. The people hate Jesus. I'm not going to let my family go. They're important to me. You're trying to save your life. You're going to lose it. I'm going to still go to church on Sunday. I'm still going to eat pork, catfish, and shrimp. I'm still going to celebrate man calendar. Traditions on the calendar. You're going to lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, we ran the gospel. Jesus kept the Sabbath day. The same shall save it. 
That mean you got to go through the process of getting that reward. Because people I teach it once save, always say, that's not no truth for that. It's like a job. You work your job to what? You try, you got stuff set up for the 401 for retirement. But if you quit, you don't get the full, full thing. You lose out. But with this, this is greater. Verse 36, well. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? He said, what shall a profit man he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? The Lord told you that the world is over with. So why invest in this world? Why? We see everything getting worse and worse and worse. Say, so lose his own soul. Verse 37. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore. The, what, what is the value of your soul? What is your soul? Do you, you are the soul. So do you value yourself to say, hey, I count the cost. Let me finish the journey. And if I lose my children, my husband, my wife, my auntie, whoever is of value to you, you got to be willing to lose it all. Because at the end of the journey, you know what the promise is. You get that first resurrection. You are God, a priest of God. You get to help reign with him for a thousand years. Then you turn around after the thousand years, you are judge, and you judge of mankind. That's the great reward, the great promises. So why should I lose my salvation for this world and it's going by like a speeding bullet verse 38 well 38. whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father with all his holy angels. Well, I'm going to start at 30 because we in and out, man. I mean, our connection <laughs> going in and out, but like I say, hey, <laughs> it is it's like a robot, you know, but yeah. it's cool. You know what I'm saying? Let us not get discouraged. Let us stay upbeat. He said, verse 30, 38 said, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me. What do you mean be ashamed? Like, I ain't going to tell nobody I keep the Sabbath day. I'm going to keep that to myself. And of my word, of his word. Well, you know, Jesus kept the Sabbath day, but I ain't going to tell nobody that. Jesus didn't eat no pork and catfish or lobster or shrimp. But I ain't going to let nobody know I don't do it. I ain't going to let nobody know I know that Jesus don't do it. I'm being ashamed. In this adulterous generation, this, this whole generation is adulterous. It doesn't matter if you married or not. This stuff is buck wild out here. The television is buck wild. The movies are buck wild. And your job force is buck wild. Everything is loose in this country. Riding on emotion. Do whatever you want to do. Be whatever you want to be. It doesn't matter. And it said, a sinful generation. Is this not a sinful generation? This is a, a great sin of God because not only man have allowed himself to Put in law that two men can get married and two women can get married, but they can adopt too. We're back to Solomon and Gomorrah. We're back to the days of Noah. Every imagination of man is terrible. Then it say, and sinful generation of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he come in his glory of his Father and with the holy angel. The Lord said, Yeah, you can be ashamed of me now, but I'm going to be ashamed of you in the latter end which is the worst end for you. Because in that end, going to the lake of fire, which is going to come to existence. So let's go a little farther. Let's go into Colossians. Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. 
Colossians chapter 1 and verse 10. 1 and 10. Go ahead, walk. That ye might walk worthy of the Lord and to all you. pleasing, <laughs> being fruitful in every good work and increasing in knowledge of God. Okay, here it is. This is the game. He's telling us that ye may walk worthy. So we got to walk worthy. That's every day, not when we feel like it. Not for the ones that know about the Sabbath day. When the Sabbath day come, now I'm going to start acting like I got the word of God. Not that. Unto all pleasing and being full. The word. I mean, Every time you deal with somebody, is you doing good works or bad work? Because man, we both have the fruits of the spirit. Not when we feel like it all the time. Keep in mind, the Lord is a lamb. He came out, he was harmless. He wouldn't help anybody that wanted to be helped. In every good work, in increasing in knowledge of God. How are we increase in the knowledge of God? Because what? We study to show ourselves approved. Now we know about the Sabbath day. We know from sundown Friday evening to sundown Saturday evening. Lord's the evening and the morning makes the day. So now we know about the Sabbath day, when it start, when it end, the diet of law. We know that. We can read about that. We can read about the feast day that the Lord, what he honored. He don't deal with man. And when he come back, he's still going to do the feast of tabernacle. I'm correct? Not Thanksgiving, not Easter, not Christmas, none of that stuff. Because like I said, he had nothing to do with this world. And when he come back, he still ain't going to have nothing to do with this world. He's still going to implement what he do that's in this Bible. So let's go a little further. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy. Well, you ain't got uh, Ephesians uh, 6. Okay, Ephesians 6, thank you. Ephesians. I looked at the wrong part of my notes. <laughs> Ephesians 6. Because <laughs> now we're walking. To get good fruit. But we got to deal with our families and friends and associates. We study to show us some proof of how do we become strong in this so we don't lose this position. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, chapter 6, verse 10. Go ahead, brother. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of Be weak of his in God. Mind. Be strong in the Lord. He and said, the power be of strong his mind. in the Lord. And the power of the mighty mean something that's something that we all got to work at, even myself. That no matter what takes place in your mind, if it's not peace and it's a negative, we have to fight or should want to fight to cast it down. I said, no, because if I don't cast it down, I'm gonna say this. If I say it, I can't take it back. And Jesus watches every day. That was a daily, he watches every day on how we handle ourselves first. And how we handle everybody around us, especially in our household. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and power of his might. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know what the word wiles mean? Tricks. Put on the whole armor of God so you may be able to stand against the tricks of the devil. I mean, he got tricks, but his old tricks because he cannot entice you to do something that you're not used to doing. He only can lay out your old habits. That's why the Lord said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You got to work at this. This is daily. Remember, he said daily. When you start working at it daily, you will lose. Verse 12, go ahead. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness, wickedness, and high places. So this is what we fight against. We 
we see the people on the physical, but we look past them and say, they got a bad spirit on them. Because I'm fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm fighting against Satan because Satan either got, got into one person or to the other to cause drama. And like I always share a person, look at a brick. If you're strong, but someone you love keep dropping water on it and dropping water mean negative, 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 that water would eventually deteriorate that brick. And then that brick would fall apart into what it's made of, sand and everything else. And it will just totally be washed away. And that's what Satan want us to do. He want to be that negative water to keep dropping on the servant of God to do what? To break you down, to wash you right on away from the word of God. We have to fight at this. Verse 13, what are you going to say? Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days, and having done all to stand. So he said, he said, put on the whole armor of God. You put on the whole armor of God, so hey, the battle. It's like, like life, like going to work. You got work clothes, you don't put on half your work clothes. You put on all your work clothes that's needed to do the job. So you're fully protected, ready to do it. The same thing with the word of God. Remember, we're dealing with this daily. These are games now. We are in the games. This is mentally. The mental battle, the physical coming when the great tribulation get here. Continue. Verse 14. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It says, so stand, therefore, having your loins girded about with truth. What's true? You read, you study, so it's proof, so you can show people in the Bible if they want to read it that just kept the sabbath day even after jesus left in, in acts chapter one they still was keeping the sabbath day having your breastplate having the breath having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shy me preparation of the gospel of peace i mean what you're supposed to be about peace the only time i ever read when jesus attacks attack, attack that was when he went into the temple and took their whip and whooped everybody out of there because he was in the house doing the wrong thing Stuff of the world for self gain. Verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked. So it said, above all, take the shield of faith. We back to that faith because remember, when we started our journey off, <coughs> we was talking about, hey, I want to follow Jesus. And he already said, hey, the world hate me because I reject it. I testify against it. And if you want to, like he told me, he called all the people along with the disciples, hey, if you want to roll with me, you have to deny. There's no middle ground. This is what we got to work on every day because why every day? Because we don't know when our time, the last time for us to be alive. You try to tell your mothers, if they're hard-headed, it's sad. You try to tell your father, they are here, it's sad. Your sister, your daughter, your aunt, niece, they don't want to hear, it's sad. Because they rather argue with you rather than saying, let's humble ourselves and sit down and read the Bible. You don't have to know the Bible from beginning to end to learn how to do some things you need to do. You don't have to do that. But it's a process of learning. Continue, verse 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Uh -huh, which is the word of God. So it said the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. Now you got the word of God. You, you persuade in your mind. You work in the job now. You're the workman. Verse 18. Praying always with all prayer mm -hmm. and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all preservance and supplication for all saints. So the Lord says, say, 
praying always with all prayers. And that's something that even the women, once they get in the, get really in the rhythm of everything, they had to have come pretty much all the time. The Lord said, pray always in supplication, in spirit, and watching there too for our perseverance and supplication for all saints. You th we're supposed to be praying for each other to do the word of God. But keep everybody in prayer. They, they stay the course. Even if they step on your toes still, like, you know what? I, I pray to get it right. Even your family, remember he said, I came to bring a sword in your house. So that's a loss. We're dealing with games right now. Why study so self approved and be strong with it? Verse 19. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. He said that I can make open my boldly. What me boldly? Not to insult nobody, not to try to belittle nobody or hurt nobody's feeling, but boldly mean. I'm confident in what I'm doing. I'm, I'm confident the feast day can't talk to dead. I'm confident to show that Jesus is coming back with the angel to fight this world. Confidence. You stand boldly. Do you finish that? Verse 20. For which I Verse am 20. an ambassador in bonds that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. He said, I'm ambassador. I represent Jesus. Because remember, we started off, Jesus cannot roll with you. And Jesus put on tape, he got losses and gains. This is a, a big game to be ambassador for the Lord. Let's go to 2 Timothy. Because to be ambassadors, you know, like in a movie, sometimes ambassadors, they get beat up because they tell the truth. And people don't want to hear it. They killed Jesus. He definitely was the true ambassador for the Father. He came to do the will of the Father. Well, let's read one verse. First, Second Timothy chapter 1, one, verse 7. Go ahead, Walt. For God have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So God has not given us what? The spirit of fear. <clears throat> Where does this fear come from? Satan, the devil. So when you're trying to do something in your life and you feel overwhelmed with fear and, and that end, I don't know, all that Satan. The Lord said, you roll with him, you'll win, win, win. Why? Because you're doing the things he asked you to do. Keeping the Sabbath day, like prepping for the Sabbath day, getting everything ready. It's like for a party. Prepping. Sabbath day come, you fight to keep your mind on the Sabbath day because Satan is fighting to try to have you think about yesterday or tomorrow or later on in, later on in the day. Or he might come through your children, cousin, niece, whoever's around. We are in a we are in the thick of it. I don't give you spirit of fear, I give you but power and of love. That's the biggest thing that people miss is love. The Lord said, love wax cold. It's cold. It's gonna get colder. Mind, not devil minded. Standing strong on what you're supposed to do, not wavering. Can't have a devil mind. You can't have a sound mind. Solid. Let's go a little farther. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. Get a couple of example of losses and gain. And to the viewers, I say to you, I apologize with the, the technical part we have. It. But, you know, maintain. We're almost there. Not a long journey. Hebrews 11, and we're going to pick this up at verse 35. 11 and 35. Women receive their, their dead Where? raised to life again. And the others were tortured, not uh -huh. accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. 
Well, the thing is, here it is. We're doing the faith chapter. This is all about faith. Give you an idea what they went through. So it said, women receive their dead, raised to life again. Because we know that Jesus raised people from dead. And they went to their mom, the guy, he went running to his mother because he was raised from dead. But he ended up dying again. It's the other was tortured. So the Lord assured us that, hey, if as things get worse and worse, you might get tortured. God forbid. This said, but not accepting deliverance. That means they didn't negotiate. They went through, okay, don't get tortured because to what you want me to do, then it is what it is. That they might obtain a better re resurrection. That's the thing. The loss is, I'm going to, but the gain is a better resurrection. What's a better resurrection? The first resurrection. Nothing's better than that. Verse 36. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Yeah, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. So here it, it tells you, others have trials of cruel mocking. You know when you deny yourself that you can be mocked by your friend, maybe your wife, maybe your husband, your children. It depends on how corrupt the household became because you decided to change your life. You're going to get mocked. You're going to get your feelings hurt. And you're going to feel anxiety that you want to lash out and say some mean thing. But you got to keep in mind or should keep in mind that this battle ain't mine. It's God. And once you start putting your mind like, I can learn how to shut my mouth and just pray the Lord deal with the individual, he will, and you'll see it. Sometime it come quick, sometime it come later. But cruel mocking, yeah, and moreover, bonds and imprisonment. John went to for telling the truth, for being a bachelor. And what was the outcome of his outcome? He got a head chopped off. This is just one of example. Verse 37, go ahead. They were stoned, they were sown asunder, were tempted, and were slain with the sword. They were wandered about in sheepskin and goatskin, being desolate, destitute, afflicted, and tormented. <coughs> so Lord, the Lord is showing us, remember, <laughs> he said the world hate him. He said, well, not the world, if it hates you, these are negatives. These are losses. Because they were stoned. Stephen was stoned, and he had no, he way better than me, because he even prayed to God to forgive him. <laughs> and they was cut, cut as a son. Imagine that, get cut in half by a soul. This is what the Romans used to do to the Christians. And was tempted, remember? Saying his trickery, wild, was his wild to the devil. Trickery trying to tip you, and so was slain with a sword. Many people died with swords back then, and they weren't about in sheepskin and goatskin, being death to me, not having the, the basic necessity of life. They running for their life. Imagine if you don't make to the wilderness, you will be in this situation running for your life. All the clothes you got in your closet, they don't matter. All those shoes, that stuff ain't gonna matter. Jewelry, earring, that stuff's not gonna matter. Spencer cologne, perfume, not gonna matter because you're gonna be destituted. You're gonna be running for your life for three and a half years. That's a long time. Afflicted and tormented. But here the game. What the Lord gonna say about going through this? Verse 38. For whom the world was not worthy, they wandered in deserts and in the mount and in mountains. And in dens and caves of the earth, and all, and these all the said, they, they weren't they weren't even worthy. So that's a beautiful thing. I ain't worthy of you. You being a bright light to your family, they want to mock you and tear you down. Your children want to act a fool. Your cousin want to act a fool. He said they ain't even worthy. But you just keep doing what you do because at the end of the road, you're gonna see them again. Thirty-nine, verse thirty-nine. And these all have obtained a good report through faith, receive not the promise. 
said, every last one of them got a good report. They received good report because they kept their mouth shut. They didn't go toe to toe. Tit fat, tit, 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 tit for tat. <laughs> They, they were worried about they were they were more worried about saying, Am I pleasing to God today? That's something that we all should be thinking about. Am I pleasing God before I go to sleep? Or have I been pleasing God because I might not get a chance to go to sleep? He might say it's over the next hour or 15 minutes. But they didn't receive the promise. Verse, verse, was that was that it 39? That was it. Let's go to Jeremiah. Let's get an example of something. All right, let's go to Jeremiah and get this example. We got a couple more places after this. It's not a long journey. It's just showing you about the losses and gain. It's your choice or what you want to do. Like the Lord said, you ain't got to lose nothing. You can try to gain the world and lose in the end. And that's a greater loss. Twenty and verse. One, we're going to do Jeremiah, get his example of a loss in a gain, and get an example of how he said how the world going to hate you. 21, go ahead. Now, Peshur, the son of Emer, the priest, who was also chief governor of the house of the Lord, heard that Jeremiah prophesied these things. Then Peshur smote Jeremiah. Jeremiah prophesied, Jeremiah prophesied these things. Jeremiah prophesied these things because... The Lord, Spirit of the Lord is on. He let him know, hey, y'all terrible. There's something bad about to happen. Israel. I want to hear it. I like that to say. Verse 2. Then Pastor smote Jeremiah the prophet and put him in the stocks that were in the high gate of Benjamin. Go ahead. Which was by the house of the, of the Lord. So here it is, Jeremiah ended up getting slapped or punched in the mouth. He got hit and went to jail. For who? For none other than Jesus. <laughs> Just like John. John went to jail for what? Because of Jesus, because he kept the word of God. Verse 7, let's see how Jeremiah is feeling now because he got hit in the mouth. Excuse me. <clears throat> Verse 7. O Lord, thou hast deceived me, and I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I, and hast prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocketh me. Wait a minute. You tell me everybody mock him because he's doing the right thing? That's a loss. He counted this as loss. Like, I'm just overwhelmed with the mocking. I feel like I'm by myself. Everybody's coming at me because I'm doing the right thing. And do you not know if you go to church and if you try to be at church, but it's not just outside of, uh, just outside, inside the church too. You got to count all this. Everything. Continue. For since I spake, I cried out. I cried violence and spoil because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me and a derision daily. He said, so he said, I cried out. He cried. He cried violence. I got hit, spoiled because they took everything from him. I'm in jail because of what? The word of God. Because remember the Lord said, count the cost. If you're going to walk with me, Nobody going to like you unless they're walking with you. Can two walk together? They got to agree. And if there ain't no agreement, it's going to be drama. Might not be drama today, but it might be tomorrow. It might be calm for a couple of weeks. And it might be a storm the following week. You know, it's not going to be just peace like it should be among people that are serving the word of God in truth. See, because of the word of the Lord, it, it was a reproach unto me. And once again, daily I, I was just... Messed up. Continue, verse 9. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more of his name. 
Go ahead. But his word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing, and I could not stay. So here it is. He said, he didn't been hurt. I'm, I'm over this. I'm done. Jesus, you ain't worth it. I, I just ain't worth it. He said, so I'm not even going to talk about you no more, but he has studied so much, plus he a prophet of the Lord. I can't, I don't know. I shut my that means when you're around your family, if you got the word of God in you, it's going to be hard being around your family and not say And so later you're going to make a decision like they know what I'm about. Why I even go around them and flick them? Because they don't want to do the word of God. So then you find yourself not going around them because you're afflicting them and they're afflicting you. So what's better to do? To find a neutral ground and say, well, I'll stay away from them that maybe... They want to know about the word of God. We won't be in that type of offense and we can have a conversation. Verse 10. Go ahead, verse 10. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Report, say that they and will and we will report it. He said, and we will report it. So I heard defaming on every side. I mean, they talking bad about talking about assassinating his character, defaming him on every side. And they report, they say, we, we report to all my familiar. Go ahead. All my familiars watch for my halting, saying, preadventure, he will be enticed, and we will prevail against him. And we shall take our he revenge said, on him. <laughs> Will be enticed. He said, so perfect will you that despise you because you're doing it right. Remember the Lord said we fight against spiritualists and high race. Then he tell you the losses, you can lose your family. But you're trying to get this gain. Familiar, watch what the hard is. We waiting. Remember that scripture, count the call if not, they're gonna mock you if you can't finish the race. If you can't finish what you started, he said, then maybe we can entice them and prevail against them and take our revenge on me. I want to take out my revenge on you. This is what they want to do to you because you're doing right. So they want to mock you. He says, yeah, then he was out about family and they go eat pork. They were talking about how the Lord don't eat no pork and they back eating that. Mock it, taking revenge. But if you hit a game, though, if you stay the point, hit a game. Verse 11, Walt. But the Lord is with me as a mighty terrible one. Therefore, my persecutors shall stumble, and they shall not prevail. They shall be greatly ashamed, for they shall not prosper. Their everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. That's a strong point. That's a game. <clears throat> that's again he said the lord is with me he didn't maybe the lord with me you got to know the lord is with me the lord tells us come bold to the throne don't come weak to him you come bold to him because he's a king he's a god you come bold say hey i know the lord is with me as a mighty turn one what do you mean by because he's gonna wreak that trouble with me therefore my persecutors they still stumble. I mean, they're not getting be successful. They might be successful, but it's really not. And they should not prevail. They should be greatly ashamed. What me crazy? We get down the road. Greatly saying how they treated, how they acted, how they showed themselves. And they should not prosper. We can't look at prosper saying material thing. That's nothing. But prosper at this point, they ain't getting the first resurrection. They're going to be in judgment day. And the everlasting confusion shall never be forgotten. What they've done is never going to be forgotten because it's being written down. So let's go to 1 John. We got about four more places. 1 John chapter 2. Let's see something else the Lord said. That's a game. We went into that with a game with Jeremiah. But loss, 
Everybody was against them. <clears throat> First John chapter 2, verse 15. See what the Lord gonna say. Because we are on this earth. As a Pharisee, why do you keep breaking the commandments of God with your tradition? Go ahead, read, Walt. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. What's in the world? Garbage. And what he's saying that, once again, what is more important than serving your God? Or who is more important than serving your God? Or keeping the Sabbath day? Or to die till all the feast day? No one should stop you from doing that. If you work a job you can't get off, then that's so be it. But at least try to put yourself in a position that you can get off. And if it don't turn out like that, okay, once you have work, man, right on, try to get to, to the feast, just like a party. Many times you got to work late, you shooting to get to the party or get to the club. You don't let it stop you, same thing with the feast. First thing. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. You said, for all the, that's in the world, it's the lust of the, of the flesh. Your eyes see it, your mind start lusting. And if you ain't careful, you'll find yourself trying to plot or premeditate to do it. So, Somehow, it's the pride of life. It's gonna fade. Remember, this earth is gonna go back to you told the first place. It's gonna be earth, none other than righteous gods, as all the wicked people and Satan will be on the lake. It will be in the lake of fire. Verse seventeen. Go ahead. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So if you do it forever, but let's go get a quick example as we're about to wrap this up. Second Timothy chapter four, something that Paul going to say, something happened to one individual that was hanging with Paul rolling with him. Second Timothy, we got like three more places. Second Timothy four, I think three or four. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Go ahead. Charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Now here it is. Here it is. You see here? This is something else you tell your family. He said, the Lord Jesus Christ shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearance. So what do you mean at his appearance? Appearing means he got to show somewhere. So you can take that away. You ain't going to heaven because he's coming here. He got to appear. Continue. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with long suffering and doctrine. Uh huh. So he tell you pre preach the word. Cause remember, you take you got the job now. And just because sometimes you might have Bill conversation with somebody today, maybe tomorrow. It might be a long span between, but you still put the study so self approve because we come until the time now where nobody wanna hear the word of God now. Nobody wanna do Bible study. Not even when you go to church, people don't want a Bible study anymore. Because so many people got their own opinion. So it's getting worse and worse and worse. But you both be be ready. Continue. For the time will come when for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And that's that's right now. Preachers getting paid to tell the people what they want to hear. They're more concerned about the people than the word of God. And that's on Sunday church, and that's on Sabbath day churches too. Doesn't matter. Itching ears. Say so they're gonna turn. They don't want to hear sound doctrine. Continue. Verse 4. And they, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth 
and shall be turned unto fables. The Lord said, this, remember he said, count the cost. If you want to turn away and you know about the Sabbath day, the diet you off and you it's just too much because your family, your friend, the, this life is more valuable. The Lord said, I'm going to let you turn you over to favor. I'm going to let you believe that, that there's a Santa Claus. I'm going to let you believe that. I mean, I'm going to let you believe all that dumb stuff because you refuse to accept the truth. Verse 5, go ahead. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Because remember, you got to put on the whole armor of God because remember, you're fighting. This is a spiritual battle. So now, but watch thou in all things, endure affliction. <clears throat> you turn the news on, you see them about mayhem and chaos. You watch it. It ain't getting no better, like the Lord said, you get worse and worse. Do the work of evangelists. Meaning you get a chance to evangelize somebody, fine. Make full proof of your ministry. What do you mean? Make full proof of what you're about to talk about. So you don't get mocked. Like I try to teach you how to box people where they can't get out of it. Well, let's go see a, a quick verse of the Lord will say about why we're doing this. Make full proof, because we're dealing with this. Job chapter 9. Job chapter 9, and we're going to read one verse, 9 to 24. Go ahead, Walt. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? He said, he said the earth is given to the wicked. Keep in mind. Everything that's on American calendar, you can read in the history book. But people want to argue about different holidays, what you keep, what you can't keep, and it's all in the history book. It has nothing to do with God. It's either dealing with a false God or dealing with a day of, of murder. This earth is given to the wicked. That's why the Lord said, be ye, you are in the world, or don't be a part of it. Remember, you got to do this day. The women's dressing loose. The men dressing like women's. This stuff is crazy out here. And if you don't participate in it, then you are that beacon of light that they don't want to see. We just to be that beacon of light that the people in the darkness, the family, the loved ones, they can see that beacon. Like I said, well, you know what? Let me go talk to them today because they have shown themselves to be a right person to talk to. But the word of God, they don't do what they used to do. They have changed. You know, I know they're not perfect, but I'm going to talk to them because such they used to cuss all the time. They don't even cuss no more. Such they used to wear loose clothes. They don't even do that no more. Such they used to do this. Such they used to do that. But they're doing this. Now they're looking at all the bright things you're doing because you're gaining. <coughs> Losing all, you, you lost all the stuff. Remember, you got to deny yourself. So let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. It gives an example of that, of denying something. We got two more places. I probably went long, but you know, due to our technical difficulties, you know, that, that pushes a little longer than what we should be. Because usually any lesson the Lord give me is an hour, hour and a half, you know. And I know some of y'all got done watching other churches, you know, teach a lesson and everything. And like I said, I appreciate you coming and logging in on the Gospel Word broadcast you know, after watching uh, your home church, whatever it may be. Or, or maybe you didn't, but thank you for your patience. So we got two more places after this. So we had Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11, and let's pick this up at verse 23, 11 and 23. Go ahead. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was here three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child, and they were not afraid of the king's commandments. So 
So Moses' parents was on point with the word of God. They weren't scared. We ain't letting you kill our child, so we going to hide him. Continue. By faith, Moses, when he was when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of, of Pharaoh's daughter. So it is, it is Moses was in a position to be rich. But he cut out that ass. I'm gonna lose that. I want I don't want what the world offers. Like I said, he valued his soul. Continue. Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So what he do? Losses and gain. I'm gonna lose this. I could be rich and good. He was in that position. But he said, no, I want what the Lord gave for one plan, that uh, being in the first resurrection and everything. So that's the route he took. Continue. Esteeming the reproach of it? Christ, greater riches than treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. So here it is. He said, Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasure of Egypt, because this Egypt had no treasure that could compare to being blessed and holy and being a priest of God and rolling with God for a thousand years, as well as being a judge during Judge Day. Egypt didn't have no, 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 no treasure worth that at all. So Moses went through it. Let's go to First John, and then we got one more place. First John. First John chapter two. And it's something that we kept always keeping our mind. First John chapter two and three. Go ahead, Walt. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Say, we do know him if we keep his commandments. Now look at our loved one. They majority of people sit there and say, I know the Lord, but they don't keep the commandments. You got to keep the commandments. It's not personal. This is the book. Continue. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. The Lord said, you're lying the truth. Now, what's, what's the first thing, the biggest thing people get wrong? The Sabbath day. Majority of our love will go to church on Sunday. They can't read it, can't prove it. But they do not want to go to church on the Sabbath day. Or start keeping the Sabbath day from sundown to Saturday sundown. Continue. But whosoever keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He said, well, who's going to keep his word in him as the love of God perfected? Continue. He that, he that saith he abide in him ought himself also to, so to walk even as he walked. So here it is said, the love of God perfected. If you keep the commandments, hereby we know that we are in him. And he that abide ought himself also to walk even as he walked. So if we going to follow Jesus, remember, we start this out. We want to walk with Jesus, roll out with him. So as we get reading the last play, we see the losses and we see the great gains that there's no, should be no debate about it. Go for the win. So let's go to Philippians, our last place. Philippians chapter 3. Losses and gains. <clears throat> you can walk with Jesus. You can lose everything on the natural side. But on the spiritual side, you're going to gain. And that's what you got to keep in mind. That I'm gaining. I'm gaining. Philippians chapter 3, verse 2. Go ahead. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concisions. He's Said, beware of dog dealing with gay people. Beware, beware of evil workers, people that don't want to keep the word of God, want to argue, fight, leave alone. 
the world consistent. People that sit here and use these, if I'm correct, I think dealing with being short with you with words and everything, they're really trying to twist you up. Verse three, go ahead. For we are the circumcision which worship God in spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So the key word is saying, we ain't got no confidence in the flesh. Because like the flesh going to get you in trouble. But long as you keep your mind on Jesus, when you, you're hurt and when you're not hurt, you every day, but it's a good day. You're alive. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, and Hebrew of Hebrews, as a touching the law, touching the law, a Pharisee. Here it is, Paul giving you a little bit of background by him. He say, I'm in it to win it. Let's get here to, to winning this. Verse 7. But what things were gained to me? Those I counted lost for Christ. Say like Moses. Moses had all of Egypt. But he counted a loss for Christ, for Jesus. And here's Paul saying, sure, I had everything. I was the man. I was persecuting the church, thought I was doing the right thing, till I found out that I was doing the wrong thing, and I lost everything. His character, everything. <clears throat> The way he lived, everything. And it lost price. Read the eighth verse as we close it. The eighth verse. Yeah, doubtless, and I counted all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count of them but dung that I may win Christ. Do we have do we have that same mentality? Yay, doubtless. Remember, you can't doubt this. I count all things but loss. Everything. Look at your home, your clothes. Look at uh, that ain't nothing to me. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. I want to be more point with the word of God. Do I really know the Sabbath day, the diet of law, the feast day, about not going to heaven, can't talk to death? Do I really know these things where I can point them out in my Bible? For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. He said, I suffer the loss of all things because we can read what he said. He was shrek. He got whooped, stoned, chased. He went so his life was turned into being, it was convicted. To inconvenience. He lost all of the game. Then he said, I count them as dumb. What's dumb? Don't mean nothing. Like going to the bathroom. It don't mean nothing. That I'm that I may. He didn't say I won. He said that I may win Christ. That's the same attitude we're supposed to have. Look at our losses, but look at the gains. That's why the lesson of the day we did is losses and the games. Many of you know what I'm talking about because you lost your family, friends, probably your husband, wife, children, because you done picked up your cross and you are a new creature and renewing yourself daily, mentally. You have to work at this. The key word, you. So I pray to the Most High God, my name is Jesus. Wherever you at, I think the Saturday is over, but I thank you for being patient because I know that we struggle today with the with the sounds and everything. and But, you know, long as you was able to hear the scriptures and everything, that's what really counts, you know. And maybe if the Lord will, the next go around, everything be a little much smoother. And on that note, Walt, you want to close this out with the scriptures? Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Which art in heaven. Will be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy, kingdom thy come. will be done. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven.
Give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To everybody, be safe until next time. And look at don't look at your losses, look at the gains. Stay strong in the word of God. And I'll see you soon, if it's the Lord will. Thank you.